many Sorry other about residents, that, folks. many other people across this whole Bay Area and the region. We thank you for your Just dropped unexpectedly. Just of no stick with me until I sign off. Okay, folks? Right now, we'd like to bring a youth up, young man by the name of Nate Sorry about Henderson. That. He is an Oakland High School student. That's my school I graduated from uh, way back 1983, Oakland High. <laughs> Students and a fellow with the New Voices, our rising project of the Rose Foundation for Communities and the Environment this summer. As a part of the New Voices Summer Climate Justice Leadership Academy, Nate will continue to develop his knowledge about environmental issues affecting Oakland residents like climate change, resilience, food, justice, and more. Nate also spoke at Senator Hancock press conference when she introduced her coal bills. Let's give Nate a hand. Come on, Nate. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, Oakland. So my name is Nate. I'm an incoming freshman at Howard University. I graduate from Oakland High, and I live a couple blocks down the street. Now, every day, I hear the trucks behind me on A80, and I see the pollution from the trucks and the buses all around me. And then they say they want to have a plan to ship coal. So I'm looking. How is West Oakland and where I live the most impacted communities? And once again, we get the worst of the of the hand, you know, we're let down. And I was just thinking, if I have a voice, I might as well speak up for it, and I live here. So. And then I see on the TV all the time how black lives matter when we get gunned down in the, by the police, but I think black lives really matter when we get impacted like this. When it's every day that we walk and we're breathing in the air that other people don't have to breathe in, and we're in the same city. We live in the same city. How is that even fair? So I just think that Oakland doesn't need more pollutants, more toxins. We need a clean energy source plan, and we need to look for the future. For me, for my kids, what, what will they do if, if everything is already ruined before we even have a chance? The bottom line is Oakland needs to keep moving forward, and bringing coal will only be setting us back. Ban coal in Oakland. Thank you. This is about future generations. We want generations of generations of generations of our families, our children's children's children to breathe clean air and live into a society that's not going underwater on the coastal land. Why are we here? All right. We're honored to have with us the Reverend Laurel J. Manning. She is the senior pastor of the Skyline Community Church, uh, UCC in Oakland. She holds the respective master degree from Union Theology Seminary, Columbia University, Howard University, and the University of Michigan. She is the Northern California Nevada representative for environmental justice for her denomination. She spoke at the February Oakland Interfaith Rally against coal and at City Hall. The uh, Skyline Community Church has been a very much supporter of this whole uh, efforts to stop coal from coming to Oakland. Let's put our hands together for Reverend Laura Mann. Hey, what a gorgeous day it is here, everybody. And I want to, let's hear it again for the organizers of this amazing rally today. Let's put our hands together. so much hope today looking at all of you and here with my clergy colleagues here representing the voices of so many faith communities including dozens that are part of California Interfaith Power and Light and the Sierra yeah. Club who are uniting together and saying no coal in Oakland and you are here because you care about Oakland and because your voice matters right yeah. Okay, so this Monday night, as you know, we will be voting on whether or not to bring coal into Oakland, shipping it out to be burned into countries in Asia. 
I think if they asked us, we'd be really clear about what our vote is, don't you? Let's hear it. No more coal. No more asthma. No more cancer. No more climate change. The developers, I think, have gotten our city council into a bit of a pickle. The developers claim that they will create a new, never-before-seen, clean coal operation that covers up the coal trains, that covers up the coal terminal, so that no dust escapes. But I think the real cover-up is the developers' intentions to sell off access to our city's waterfront to the highest bidders, regardless of their promise that coal would not be part of the plan. And we are not going to fall for that, are we? No. no. So we're going to come to city council meeting on Monday to make sure that they don't fall for it either, right? No. All right. So the good news, our city council member, Dan Kalb, is recommending an item on the agenda that we can support to ban coal in Oakland. So come and support him. You know the real reason why we don't need coal? We don't need a coal terminal in Oakland. You know why? Because coal is terminal. Coal is terminal to human lives. Coal is terminal morally. Coal is terminal scientifically. And coal is terminal economically. Isn't that right? It's terminal. I've got to turn my page. Ugh. All right, you know the moral issue. The universal ethic, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Nate was talking about neighbors, right? He was talking about the kid in West Oakland, breathing toxic fumes and dirty air. He's our neighbor. Who doesn't care about the kid in West Oakland? And as Flint reminds us, environmental toxins particularly impact poor children of color, locally and globally. West Oakland has many parallels to Flint, about 90% black and Hispanic population, where residents already experience high rates of poverty and unemployment. Imagine if this coal train were being routed through Montclair or Piedmont. Would it happen? No. no. This is already a local health issue. The children of West Oakland are already contending with fumes and noise from the heavy volume of diesel trucks and other pollutants from the port. We need to ask ourselves, just like Nate asked, what if they were our children? They're our neighbors. This is also already a global issue. We need to imagine the impact of the children, not just here in Oakland, the impact of the children and the families in Utah, in the mines, and the impact on the people in Asia where this coal would be burned. And we need to consider the impact on future generations. And we need to consider the impact right now. Seven million people die every year in this planet because of air pollution, according to the World Health Organization. Seven million people. Our governor and our mayor spoke in Paris at the November Climate Summit. They lifted up our city and our state as exemplars, as leaders in the environmental justice movement. They echoed the global scientific community's unanimous pleas that we keep 90% of fossil fuels in the ground. And then Governor Brown went to the Vatican and spoke out and clearly articulated that this is a moral issue. He's right. This is a moral issue. So why would we be complicit in prolonging and accelerating this environmental and humanitarian disaster? It's a bad investment for Oakland. Renewables are the way of the future. Oakland deserves good energy, good jobs, clean air. We do not need a coal terminal because coal is terminal. Your voice matters. Come to City Council on Monday. Thank you very much. We're at Oakland City Hall for No Coal in Oakland. Uh, Reverend over... Laura Manning, let's give her a hand. So 
anybody that feels energy involved uh, want to help create this electricity by natural sitting on the bike pedaling we, we sure could use you right now uh, plus uh, there is a food truck out there ran by Katie yellow food truck please help yourself go see the food truck and it's so wonderful seeing you all here why are we here no cold this group here is acapella singer Marcy Boyd, Bonnie Lockhart, and Nancy Schimmer, Schimmel join us today from the group Acapella. They came together to bring more musical muscle to all our movement for the 99%. Please join them in song. Let's give them a big hand. You sing too, and we want you to sing this. We don't want coal here in Oakland Town. I want to hear that. We don't want coal here in Oakland Town. One more for good luck. We don't want coal here in Oakland Town. Yeah. 
One big round of applause. Beautiful music. Music is something we all can come together on. We also can all come and together forth. on No Coal in Oakland. No Coal in Oakland. No, no Coal in Oakland. No Coal in Oakland. Try to control up here, uh, umbrella and all the, right. It's very important to realize that all this effort and the camera, so that has come forth. We went up against 56 million dollars worth of Utah parcel tax or taxes that they have taxed themselves in order to get coal out of the ground in Utah and send it to Oakland by rail that would go through low income communities along the way that would contaminate folks. And they talk about covering coal cars which never been done and talk about all this and we, we have worked and organized with many different organizations working together work but it takes money to do this and we want Michael Coffin to come and we're going to talk about a fun pitch. So let's let's put our hands together again for Michael Coffin. I've, I've never been applauded for money before. Thank you for that. Um, I'm a, I have two asks. The first ask is that uh, what's being distributed here is our trifold. We've been producing these over and over and over again for nine months. On the back of the trifold, there are phone numbers. There are phone numbers of every city council person and the mayor. My first ask is please go and call your elected representatives Put pressure on them to do the right thing. Please take one of these trifolds and call your elected representative. Call, in addition, call Rebecca Kaplan, who represents all of us, theoretically, and call the mayor, who represents all of us. So I'm asking, first ask, three phone calls. The second ask is that, as you know, the developer goes and fundraises $53 million from Utah. He has fundraised $260 million from us via the state of California in order for him to profit on coal. We know that politicians are constantly fundraising and when they do a pitch, they ask for $10,000 first, then they ask for $1,000 next, and then they go down. Well, I know that we have to pay $500 for the porta potties that are around the corner. We have to pay for these wonderful bikes. We have to pay to distribute all of these flyers. So please, everybody who has a $20 bill in their pocket, raise it up and signal a solicitor with a bucket and stick that 20 in there. Everybody, I want to see all those green 20s, if possible. I know that we are a people's movement, but some of us have a 20. After that, please reach into your pocket and find that $10 bill. We need everybody to contribute. I know you're contributing your time, you're contributing your energy, but we also need to contribute the money because that's the stupid system we live in. Please reach into your pocket and take out a 10, or take out a 5, or take out a 1. We need everybody to participate however you can. Thank you very much. If you don't have a 1, maybe there's some change in your pocket. No donation is too small. I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's actually true. This is a people's movement. Nobody is getting paid. If you go to our website, nocoalinoakland.org, and look up the menu item that says staff, you will see that staff is everybody here because we have no staff. We've been doing this all volunteer you are here all volunteer. Please donate. There are buckets circulating. Please call your elected representatives. Thank you very, very, very much for coming out on this beautiful hot day. Don't forget to drink water. 
And don't forget to use the porta potties that are right around the corner. We paid for them. They're there for us. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a good little crowd here. Not a lot of people today, unfortunately. Thank you, Michael. We're going to move on forward. Uh, it's very important to participate any way you can. Monday, 5 o'clock, everybody need to be here and bring 10 people with you. We need to fill the City Hall Chambers, get here early, 4.15, 4.30. Uh, we need you here Monday, 5 o'clock, where the city will move forward. We want to thank Mayor Libby Schaaf for her leadership. Let's put the hands together for Mayor Libby Schaaf, her leadership. Uh, the administration, uh, Claudia Capio, let's put our hands together for her it's coming up, uh, making this happen on the inside, and then also the recommendation of Ban Cole in Oakland is coming from city staff. We're, we're very appreciative of that, and the council members has been so so much involved. Uh, uh, Dan Cow, we want to give him a hand. Shout out to Dan Cow, uh, Rebecca Kaplan. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and then also uh, we want to, uh, Noel Gallo, uh, Annie Campbell Washington, uh, we, we really want to, Larry Reed has been very helpful, we want to thank those council members, and uh, Abel, we want to thank them all, and we want a unanimous vote to ban Cole from Oakland. This is taking leadership, City of Oakland leaders and public officials taking leadership in a global climate justice. And it will go down in history that they fought a good fight, they kept the faith, and they banned coal from Oakland. Let's put our hands together for that. All right, next we will have a tongue-twisting group that's going to come. And let me try to pronounce this as best as possible. KG Kajgo Lee, uh, which is a sister, uh, is an oral historian, musician, who utilized music and spoken word to reveal history and heal society. Uh, a true renaissance woman, uh, uh, Sheila Kakaji. Say that one more time. All right, let's put our hands together for her as she performs and lectures extensively throughout uh, the continental United States of America, the Caribbeans, and England, fighting against racism and all forms of social injustice for the past 40 years. Today, she is accompanied by musician educator and social justice warrior, Val Surgeon. Let's give both of them a hand. Y'all correct your names for me. I'm sorry for this.
culture, we do nothing without the drum. Because the drum is the heartbeat. And once the drum ceases to beat, so do we as a culture cease to exist. So we don't want that. We want to live and survive and thrive. That's why we want no coal in Oakland so we can stay alive, right? But you know they call it progress. A little progress here, a little progress there, but every part of progress is not good for you. It's like magic. It's an illusion. It's, it's not real. It's the magic of progress. Everybody, everybody talking green, green, but nobody want to sacrifice a darn thing. Got to change the way we live and how we do things. <laughs> Abracadabra, alakazam. Hocus pocus, no more human man's Nothing up my sleeve, nothing behind my ear. Look, all the people disappear. First you see us, then you don't. The earth will be here. But the people won't. Cause we'll be dead, done into a billion. Like the others, just another speech is heading for extinction. Dead, done into a billion. Like the others, just another species headed for extinction. of humankind from 70 million tons of carbon dioxide 24 7 pumped into the air because few dare to care about the true cause of overconsumption and mass production but there's no such thing as something for nothing yet we keep wanting buying and flaunting things things that can't keep us alive or help the world survive the mega disasters of armageddon heading our way at some point in collapse, melting polar ice caps. How's that for progress? Are we having fun yet? Paying with our lives for the greenhouse effect, the ultimate debt of imperialism, of materialism, of wealth and greed, of worshiping electronic things that bring us up closer to extinction because truth is stranger, strange than fiction, like colonization to this condition, like manifest destiny. <laughs> Dead time. 
Nation, no call, 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 no
of the unions to uh, their 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 front hand. They're on the front line right. of dealing with products coming in and out of this oh, this you know. great port. We got, I think, the fifth largest port uh, in the world, and we are setting the tone for climate justice, where we would love to see grain or wood or yeah, something something. shipped up out of there or Besides Tesla coal. Motor Company coming to the West Oakland Army Base creating that. We'd love to see some green energy jobs opportunity for the residents of Oakland and the East Bay. Come on, no coal in Oakland. That does not no make coal. any sense at all. It's a dying industry. And we, we definitely applaud all the council members and the mayors for stepping up to the plate. We, we hope to have a unanimous vote. Uh, but we, we realize that, that there's been some that's been very much supportive. We want to thank David Soldnit Yay. and Brooke Anderson for the beautiful photos that you Woo. see. Uh, and the people on the sticks there. Uh, thank you, artists. We thank you all. And thank you all for holding them up. San Francisco Bay Chapter of Physicians and Social Responsibility. We thank you. We thank you. It's just... It's amazing to have so many players that has doing some. No matter what your position or how you have helped to stop this coal from coming to Oakland, we appreciate every person, every dollar, every energy, every word, every meeting you attend, all the good thinking and the smart people that have come here that has given their time. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Together we stand, divided we fall. We must continue this fight. Martha Cool is uh, is a registered nurse at Children's Hospital, uh, Oakland, a vice president of the Alameda Central Labor Council and treasurer of the National Nurses United California Nurses Association. Martha and her fellow nurses are always ready to teach us about health coal and climate change. Martha is cool. <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much for that kind introduction. As nurses, we see the effects of the climate crisis daily and experience in our communities. And most importantly, we see how it affects our patients. We see the daily impacts of pollution, toxic emissions on human health, we see increased asthma rates, rare deadly forms of cancer, and increasing risks of infectious disease traveling around the world. That's why we are speaking out to declare the climate crisis a clear and present public health emergency. Right. Trains bearing millions of tons of coal running through Oakland and nearby cities will pose a grave health risk and safety to our patients and our communities. There is a myth that says we have to choose between our jobs and our environment. But nurses know that there are no jobs on a dead planet. The climate crisis is a symptom of a deeper problem. An economy based on extraction and exploitation of resources and people. In order to change this, we must work together to build quality, sustainable union jobs that will benefit our communities today and the future generations. We can and must invest in rebuilding our broken infrastructure and expand renewable and sustainable energy sources to create more green jobs. It's time to move away from an economy based on fossil fuels. We support a just transition to a sustainable energy economy. Standing up for climate justice also means standing up for health care, health care justice. Medicare for All could begin to level the playing field in financing health care so that we could better fight health care disparities and the equities we know exist and they are exacerbated by our polluted environment. We can easily fund the needed changes through the Robin Hood tax, a small sales tax on Wall Street that would generate $300 billion annually to reinvest in all of our communities and on all of our issues. Together we can fight climate change and create a better planet for our children and grandchildren. Nurses will continue to fight at the bedside, advocate for our patients, where they, anywhere they are in all of our communities. We must work together 
When you take one of us on, you take all of us on. Thank you. No coal in Oakland. Woo! Put our hands together again for Martha, because she's cool. Nurses are very important. I am a cancer survivor by the grace of God. I contracted cancer two years ago and caught it early. My kids grew up with asthma. They uh, from West Oakland. We have had uh, challenges on health of this community. West Oakland has, has been through a whole lot of challenges for environmental justice, from the truck traffic, the rerouting 880 freeway to 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 to, to the former Army base uh, World War II stuff and shipbuilding industry. To, to the post office coming, taking homes and being planted down into area and, and bought people's homes, gave them a little bit of money for their homes, to Bark coming through. West Oakland have had its share of giving contribution to, to, to the whole global economy. And so why would we want coal in Oakland? No way, Jose. No coal in Oakland. Next, we want to bring a very important part of this whole effort is the Union, SEIU, Local 1021, Kimberly Moses is the Port of Oakland Chapter President for SEIU 1021, and a rank and file activist. Her heart is in her work. She and her local have been working with the No Coal in Oakland since 2015. Let's give SEIU a big hand, Clause 1021. Union, 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 15 and a Union. Thank you, Reverend Chambers. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. I won't be before you long, but I just have a few comments. What I want to say is that the developer and his business partners are misleading the community about coal and jobs aided by some members of the black clergy and black professionals. They have attempted to use the community's desire for jobs to push this project through with coal. All the while trying to convince us that we have to accept coal for jobs. All of this is at the risk of our health and the environment. Not only is this insulting, but we reject the notion that bringing coal through our communities is a matter of jobs versus community health or jobs versus climate justice. What is equally insulting is the initial promise that coal was not considered when the developer entered into contracts with the city of Oakland. That was the case until a $50 million carrot was dangled in front of you-know-who from coal mining companies representing Kentucky and Utah. The question is for our elected officials. Is if they as members of the city council support the interests of these few petty capitalists or the interests of the community that elected them. There's no need for coal for this project to be profitable and I simply say to you, no coal in Oakland. No coal in Oakland. No coal in Oakland. All right, we're just going to be here a couple more minutes, folks, because uh, I have to leave for another well, engagement. Let's give SEIU 1021 a hand. Really, thank you for watching this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to be getting out a little more regularly, so I uh, really appreciate you. And uh, much love and much peace. This is Clark. Freeman Sullivan signing off from uh, Oakland. Let's give another hand for a brief announcement.